So we're looking at the mounting bracket for uh, Fronius Primo. Um, this is actually from a six, but the four is absolutely identical. Uh, importantly, we can see here the DC isolator switch. And on this side here, we have the DC input positive, and here we have DC input negative, and this is the AC side over here. So we absolutely don't want to be touching anything on that side. So what we'll find in the one that's installed is we should have um, DC input number one here um, uh, occupied. Uh, because we've got only 10 panels on here, you wouldn't think uh, this one won't be um, occupied. So it just gives you a bit of extra um, capacity to uh, install multiple um, strings in here. So the first string, we've only got the one string, which is 10, 370 um, Jinkos. Uh, which will be plugged into input position one, uh, positive on that side, and this one here should also be occupied. That's the uh, DCP DC input uh, negative. So first position. So what we're going to be doing is installing um, the um, boosted power device, boosted power module, uh, into uh, DC input position number two. So we'll just need that first slot. And we'll skip this one and we'll put it on here just to keep that consistent, give this spare in case we need another uh, input line on there. We won't because it's a four and we've already got 3,700 um, 3, watts already on there. And so we've already reached the capacity of the device anyway, so there's no point in occupying that. However, um, uh, we will, uh, just to be consistent, um, skip this negative and use this one. So we'll be plugging into this one and into this one. Now, importantly, in the installation process, the uh, length of the bare wire is indicated just here. So we need 15 millimeters. And if you're still using Imperial, like three countries in the world, uh, five eighths of an inch. Um, so we do need to bear that wire um, to 15 millimeters in length. And um, importantly, these, um, Actually, don't know the name of the uh, of the screw type, but it's a star shape. We can technically also use a flathead in here, but let's use the uh, proper proper one. And importantly, the torque on these is three point five newton meters. So um, I don't have a torque wrench, but I have a very small um, handheld um, handheld screwdriver here. Um, and in fact, I think the documentation recommends that you don't use any kind of power tool to um, to tighten these anyway. So you would use a hand. Um, a hand screwdriver to tighten those up. So we'll be unscrewing this one and unscrewing this one and inserting our 15 millimeter bared end of the positive in there and the negative in there. And that's all we need to do. We'd probably do that with the isolator switch in the off position, of course. Um, and then when we uh, turn power back on, uh, we should have power coming in on the DC side when we tell the boosted power module to actually turn on. We're looking at the uh, configuration of this device, remembering that because we can only output maybe at a pinch uh, 95, 98 uh, volts on that booster, um, we need to tell the Fronius that uh, you're never gonna get more than the, than that 90 volts. So what we can do, and it, this is a configuration inside the box, so you would need to um, read the manual about how to get into these settings, but I've already set it. So if I scroll along to the information window and press enter, uh, if we go down to the device info setting, uh, we can see the general info about the, the Primo, uh, but if we set, okay, here's what we're looking for, the trackers. So um, so the MPPT, tr the MPPT or the MPP tracker, um, tracker one is auto, um, which, which is a normal setting for, um, for all these devices. So what it basically says is, look, if we get a constant, you probably get a close to a constant voltage um, uh, when the array is, when the stream, uh, when the array, solar array is connected. So you probably get a constant voltage or close to when the solar array is um, connected, but it, it, it's not totally reliable. So, so the MPPT will track it, track the voltage and the incoming current, um, and try to uh, and try to maximise, try to hit the peak efficiency um, 
on that device. Now, on our um, boosted power module, we know um, exactly um, how much power we're going to put, put into it, um, and we know that it won't stray from 90 plus or minus a few um, millivolts, a few hundred millivolts. Um, that, that's the power, that's the voltage we're going to input to it. So we don't want the tracker to be chasing up and down because that'll be inefficient in itself. So uh, we've actually set it to a fixed voltage of 90 volts. Um, again, this uh, depends on um, your unit. Um, there is a way to set, usually your tracker, to set to a specific current uh, constant voltage. And that's what we've done in this one. Um, so we'll always be putting 90 volts in there and once we decide on a sensible um, discharge rate for our batteries we'd probably also be putting a constant current in there but there is actually no setting for that and it probably doesn't care that much in fact. So that's the important difference between um, our boosted power module and a solar panel array is that um, the voltage on the on the solar panel array will move, probably not that much in truth um, but it will um, but it will change up and down, but the our boosted power module will almost always be exactly the same voltage and we don't want the tracker to, um, to shift. So here we are on the um, actual Fronius 4, We're currently still, in, still getting about a thousand watts on there at the moment, so it's still it's quite late in the afternoon, but um, still getting plenty of power so here's the wires that we ran through the wall just the other day uh, so we've got our positive very uh, very <laughs> distinctly marked with a nice big red end and we checked that the other night um, and the negative in there so we'll and just to give you a bit of context we'll be going up if I can manage to reach up in here so just behind these knockout panels just here We'll be going up through one of those, probably this one or that one. We'll see when we get the back panel off. Um, we will be able to uh, reach up through there and uh, insert the uh, insert the uh, leads here. And here's the DC isolator switch, uh, which we saw on the mounting bracket there before. So we'll just have to turn that into the off position, um, turn off the AC side, which is inside the power meter, obviously. Uh, and just um, having prepared our wires, we should be able to screw that in just a couple of minutes and uh, and have it all up and running. So as I say, I want to, uh, I'm a bit of a, a bit of a stickler. I don't want to waste any power this afternoon. So when, when, when we drop down, um, to a you know, very low um, <laughs> amount of input. So we're, now we're getting 1.5 uh, kilowatts now. So uh, so we, we don't want to be losing that power, which we're currently uh, storing in our batteries. Probably Actually, probably the battery's probably full. Uh, so we'd be dumping that on the grid. Um, so uh, what I'll be doing next is uh, bearing these wires to the 15 millimeter, making sure I don't lose the uh, the polarity of there. We'll check it again to be absolutely sure just before we plug in, but um, should be okay uh, if, we, if we're careful just with that lot losing the tape. I'll get that done, and when we're ready to plug in, I'll catch up again. So we have uh, got that piece back on. Okay, we've got that back on. So again, just just uh, little connectors there, and that just slots on. We just need to put back the mounting bracket screws and then put the cover back on. Okay, mounting bracket screws are back in and tight and it was, uh, a good indicator is that those screws go up easily. If there's any kind of resistance or whatever, you haven't got it seated right. So it is perfectly good now. Next, just put the cover on. Okay, cover back on. Everything all looks good. Now what I want to do is I'll just go back in here to confirm. So here's our leads that we've just wired in. Um, so using the standard conventions, um, positive male, negative female, and our connectors will go into the corresponding ones. And again, we've checked the polarity umpteen million times, which is very good. Now what we don't want to do uh, is uh, plug, plug these in while the power is off. Um, so I'll just turn the, uh, so we can see that our batteries are at full charge here. So this was in. Okay, we're at 99% on the batteries here. Uh, so before we turn the DC isolator back on, we want to connect these up and make sure they are 
good and hot, good and seated. So we'll do that. Okay, that is now done. So those are good and firm. And we have a small hole up in there, which we'll, we will drop our cables down there when we're ready. Um, so next, we're making sure the isolator is off um, for, for the booster. So we do not want the booster to come on yet. We want, um, so we've wired everything in. So we want to turn it on and make sure everything comes back on per, as per normal. Okay, we'll put the isolator to the on position. So we'll go put the isolator back on for the AC. We should get our power up lights coming on, which we are. We'll just wait for that boot up. And with the booster turned off, um, we will only be getting solar. And now we're getting power up. And remember, remembering that we should only get voltage from our solar panel array. And it's getting quite dark now, so I don't imagine we'll get too much, but we should have some still. It is reading low power voltage, but that's perfectly acceptable. And we should be getting maybe a couple of hundred watts from the solar at this point in the late afternoon. Okay, so the device is now going through its boot. Um, we're getting really low, 34 watts. Okay, I oh, know. There we are. Okay, that's, so that's coming from just the solar array. So everything's all up and working back again. So that all looks good. So the big test will be when we turn the booster on. We're, so we're at 300 odd there now. So what I may do is I'll get some help. And uh, so we'll have monitor the output on the Fronius and then we'll turn the booster on and see if we go up by 100, 100 watts. So at the moment the booster is set to the lowest sort of fairly low level so we're only going to output 1.2 about 1, 1 ish 2 ish 1, 1 1.2 um, amps at 12 volts so that uh, should give us sorry at 90 volts it'll be um, so that should give us um, around the 100, about 108 is what the theoretical is. But of course, we've got the booster inefficiency and we've got the MPPT controller in the, in the Fronius, that inefficiency. So I'd expect we'd get somewhere between 90 and 100. If we're doing very well, we'll get 100. Uh, otherwise, I think we'll get a boost of about 90. Okay, I've just turned off the charger on this. So this is at 99% charge. So those batteries are fully charged. Um, we're waiting for that uh, to just drop back down again. Um, so what we're gonna do next is uh, throwing this switch here. We'll turn on the booster. So if we look at the override light here, it is out, meaning that the relay, relay is open. And when we turn this booster on, we should get our, um, should get our 100 watts on the uh, on the Fronius's meter. Let's see if we can do that. So we're currently showing about 271. So I'm about to go throw the switch. And what we're expecting is that should go to 370, something like that. And did we get any noticeable change? Yes, we got 374. That is awesome. That's reading 102. So we got our 100 watts uh, extra power. Everything's working exactly as designed. So quite critically, we just need to make sure that there's nothing uh, getting hot or going wrong here. So we've got our power cables are all cold. Battery feed-in cables are cold. Everything's cold. Remember, we only do 100 watts. Uh, the overheat fan hasn't even turned on. Um, battery charger is not relevant, and MPPT controller is not relevant. So we're just running purely off the batteries at the moment. So as far as I can tell, everything is just perfect. We are running. We got 104. So the efficiency we must be getting must be pretty good from at least uh, the side of the. 
uh, of the Fronius. So the Fronius are doing an outstanding job um, translating that. So I think we've got about 104. We expected 108. Um, so that is pretty awesome. Um, so I, I think we're doing very well here indeed. Um, now, the only thing we don't know is how much current we're actually drawing from the batteries. So unfortunately, I do not have a uh, Hall's effect um, sensor that I can check how much current we're actually drawing from the batteries to get a true indication of efficiency. So we know that the booster, <clears throat> the boost from the booster to the Fronius, we're getting exactly what we expected of very, very, very good efficiency. Um, but um, we don't know in order to get that um, 108 watts, how much we're drawing from the battery. So I imagine uh, we'll, that'll be the next big number we need to work out. But so far, everything is looking good. Uh, we'll keep an eye on this, obviously, as we don't want to uh, come out in the morning and find uh, the house burned down or anything. Um, but I can't imagine that ever happening. Uh, but everything it looks just perfect from here. Okay, so uh, we're not liking the output of this indication here. Uh, so we're dropping down to 10. Now, that can only mean that the uh, 6 watts, so we're going to go to 0 very, very soon. So we practically none. So I'm thinking one possibility is that when it's running, the uh, Fronius is using way more than uh, the 100 watts we are putting into it, which means that effectively we're not getting any power, it'll just be the power being generated to keep the Fronius powered. <laughs> and uh, so we're at 2 watts now, now we're back to zero. So if we're at zero watts, we're not getting anything um, out of the device. So I suppose we can throw it back to zero and see uh, if we get a complete shutdown. Uh, next we'll, so what we can do then is um, boost, the, um, boost the minimum current up to say 200, 250 and see if we can get it to come back on. That's the only, only thing I can think of at this point. Okay, so we've managed to uh, Get the power to come back on. Click, click, click. I've turned up the current voltage supply to a larger amount. Now we're getting 10 to, okay, 44, 58, 54, 48, 46, 42, 40. Now this is not a good sign. We're going downhill. 34. 32, we're going downhill. I don't know why this is. Can we drop it back down to 28 watts? Twenty-four. Okay, so I'd say that's the MPPT controller uh, getting confused. So we're holding at 16. Fourteen. Okay, still confusing it. I was going to say holding, but <clears throat> it's not. So why are we dropping down? Why are we dropping down to 8 watts? Okay, I'm going to increase the current a bit more. Okay, so looking inside here, here's the, <clears throat> here's the constant current potentiometer just in here. So we'll increase that two turns. Really hard with one hand. We'll stop the exercise here. Um, the long and the short of the, the problem was um, that the um, that fixed voltage setting um, that had been recommended to me by Fronius was 
not uh, it was not working. So I'm uh, just switching the uh, the PPT controller to auto. Um, pretty much fixed that problem. Okay, after a first night of charging, uh, where the low voltage now got the cover off a little bit here, which is a bit of a pity. Uh, but we can see we're down at 11.6, and from the AGM batteries chart, um, that should have put us about 20%. Um, so we're showing 18% after full discharge. And uh, so uh, we're in the ballpark there as much as we can test and we can also see on the MPPT controller up here, we can also see, just turn it this way, it usually works better, um, that the, that we're showing um, low charge on the battery. So yeah, everything seems to have worked very nicely. We'll go and look at the charts now. You did see the washing machine, the washing machine uh, power cover that we originally had, uh, and uh, we've shut uh, we removed that. It was just you know, it was a nasty hunk of metal. Uh, it's too much metal on metal um, for a high voltage system, so so uh, we got rid of that. But uh, yeah, so that's the famous uh, washing machine cover, uh, which uh, <laughs> members of my family commented. Uh, so now. Um, now the device is called the DeLorean because uh, I built a time machine out of a DeLorean. Anyway, uh, so uh, but importantly, that we'll have a look at that chart again. And um, uh, so the, the key elements to get from it. Looking at the chart here, let's run through a few things. So, so we have um, high high capacity, 16 kilowatt battery system apart from our experimental one here so this is this green line here so so this battery here is supplies power overnight um, if we have a look at the period this blue line here this line indicates the amount of power we're using um, during the daytime this amount of power this yellow space here is the amount of power generated uh, from the system and uh, so you can see here um, from overnight, so before, so it was actually Christmas Day I did this. Um, so you can see this is where we turned on the power. So we are generating power um, through the normal process. So this is where we started up the generator, and you can see we're generating like 180 watts for this period here, where we, this is where we are fiddling around trying to get it right and then we turned it back on again and so we're doing 190 watts uh, all through the night all the way through till just after five in the morning and you can see that we're doing one 170 180 uh, 170 180 watts all the way through the night now um, you can see also that we're using during the night um, along this blue line, the consumption is like 700, 800 watts. Um, now that's that's our hot water system doing a boost or the refrigerator, either way, one of those. Um, but we're basically generating 75, uh, sorry, using 75 odd, 750 watts or so, uh, just routinely overnight just to power whatever's running at night time. Um, very likely this dip here is, uh, is my son turning off his game PC but anyway you can see that we've spread that over the entire night so flatten the batteries over out of the over the entire night now the reason we do that is because we have this battery here and there's no well, there's no point in trying to um, discharge any faster because what we're, do, what we're really doing in our case is um, assisting that the large external battery to um, to just keep the load so it doesn't actually matter when we discharge this uh, because this battery is taking the load anyway. However, if you were, if you didn't have this battery, so the period from 3 p.m. to 9 p.m. certainly in Victoria, Australia, anyway, um, that's that's considered peak time, and very very likely for the rest of the world is you know they probably have some kind of premium charge at this rate. So so between here, well, all night, and all the way up to um, 3 p.m. you're Char uh, we are charged 22 cents um, per kilowatt hour 
between three and nine, we are charged nearly 40 cents per kilowatt hour. So if you didn't have a battery, your ideal um, use for the system here is to take, to dump all of this power uh, between say here, when you when your solar cuts out anyway, or it starts to get low, certainly where, where you start using more um, power than your solar is generating. If you start dumping your stored um, booster power uh, between here and nine, that'll get, that'll get you, the, get the best advantage that you could get from the system. So it will, um, if you discharge all of that between, in the 40 cent zone, then that'll be much better than trying to spread it out over the night. So again, for us, it doesn't make any difference because the um, the external battery um, covers that. So you see here, we're, that's the consumption, and this is the state of charge of the battery. And, um, and if we look under the consumption tab, one second while it loads, um, for that same period, you see that we're all running off battery and very, in fact, no, at no time, oh, maybe, okay, just here, we used a tiny, like 0.52 kilowatts. Um, but the rest of the time we were running off battery and solar direct. So we never actually got, oh, there's another spot too, uh, where, where we were taking power from grid. So let's turn these ones off here. Um, so you see, these are, these are the times we actually took power from the grid and the rest of the time is covered by the battery. And, um, and more importantly, so consumed directly here, we can see that uh, the battery's filling up the rest and our, our generated power from the, from the booster system is, uh, it is just taking the edge off that a little bit and giving, giving the battery, the big battery a hand. Um, if we didn't have the big battery there, you'd want to be dumping it all between here and here to get the best benefit that you possibly can. Okay then, I hope that wasn't too technical. Um, pretty sure it was though. <laughs> anyway, you get the idea. Um, so, um, just I just want to let you know though, um, I wouldn't be recommending this system to implement this system just at the moment. And so in the last few days we have actually had a failure um, and we're not really sure what's going on. Um, the uh, the device shut down about nine o'clock at night. Sorry, the Fronius shut down about nine o'clock at night. Uh, nine o'clock at night, um, and the the booster was still working fine. It was um, running, but of course the current wasn't drawing any current, so so the uh, output was nothing. Um, so um, checking on the Fronius, it was uh, in a shutdown state. Um, so I went out to have a look the next morning and um, and when I tried to power it back on again, um, even I actually took the precaution of disconnecting the booster first um, and we were getting some arcing. Um, I could hear I could hear arcing when it was trying to boot. So um, uh, with with the um, device disconnected, so with the booster not even plugged in, um, we we're getting arcing. Uh, so, so I, I'm not quite sure what could, is going on. Um, it sounds like it could be something else and not my device, but uh, given given that I've never had any problem with the Fronius um, before, uh, we put the booster on there and we, we have been running for a couple of months. I mean, it's it's not kind of new, but uh, yeah, I'm, I'm not happy with it. Uh, it's shut down at the moment. So we've still got, we've still got the six at the back. Um, of the house running the battery and the other 25 Jinkos. Um, so we still got solar power at the moment, but we uh, the 10 um, 370 Jinkos are, are not uh, producing any power at the moment. Um, so uh, the solar installer is coming tomorrow. I'm hoping um, to you know, give me a hand to sort out what's going on there. Uh, we do have a, a replacement um, Fronius we can just drop on there instead, so, so it won't hold us up. Um, I, I can't. I don't want to really speculate what might be going wrong, but you know, the the kind of issues that I thought might have something to do with it. I'm not. I'm not really sure if the um, if the um, Fronius likes terribly much that the instant cut off. So we are going from um, the Fronius under load at 
300, 400 amp watts and then suddenly being at zero. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure if that might be straining a, a little bit. Um, uh, we could possibly um, add a banker capacitors or something um, to, to flatten out that curve a bit. Um, so it's not suddenly, uh, you know, 300 and then suddenly zero. Um, uh, there, there is a small capacitor bank there um, at the moment, but I imagine that gets, you know, wouldn't even last a second, I wouldn't imagine. Uh, uh, probably less, actually. Um, so that might be a solution that may, you know, again, I'm, I'm speculating entirely about what the problem could be. Um, very likely related to the device, so I w again, I wouldn't recommend... Um, you running out and trying to build this thing uh, just at the moment till we well, at least have a better idea what the hell's going on. Um, just just so you got some idea, uh, I just, uh, the origin the automation process uh, is uh, is going ahead. That's uh, that's an ESP32. Um, the reason we're using that is because we found it really hard. To, uh, uh, so we, we, we're not going to use the do we know we're going to use the ESP32 um, because we couldn't work out uh, from the sensors uh, what the real state of charge of the, of the battery, if you have one, is and we couldn't work out whether or not the um, system, sorry, the, the Fronius was, was giving power to the grid or or not. Um, so the simplest way to do that is actually just talk to the Fronius using the using the Wi-Fi and say, "Hey, give me your stats." Um, and 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 there's an API on um, on the on pretty much all inverters. Really, they have a, a, a fairly basic API that you can query and say, "You know, what are you doing?" Um, so we're so the ESP32 will have a uh, talk to the talk to the Fronius every five seconds or so and say give us your status and um, if it if it turns out that um, it's a good time to be charging it will switch to charge mode uh, if it's a good time to just be doing nothing yep it'll, it'll shut down both sides and if it decides it's a good time to charge uh, sorry a good time to discharge uh, I'll turn on turn on the booster then it will do that. Um, so it'll, it's much better than trying to guess whether it's day or night or um, how much current is being drained from the battery or is, what's the state of the monitor, but all those things. Um, we still need to control whether or not the, the charger um, comes on. So again, uh, we've got to the point where um, after the wind um, controller disaster, um, we, we, we're actually not the the wind charging is is way down the track um, so we're concentrating on um, getting the automation working correctly and also um, uh, well solving, solving this issue that we have here whatever that is um, and also um, uh, the the excess solar at, at certainly at, in, in many places um, it, it's the, the key is that it's far better for you to keep your power than to give it away these days. So in the old days when we were getting 60 cent feed in uh, 10 years ago, um, a long gone and um, it's only going to be that the feeding rate is going to be lower and lower as time goes by um, and the cost of power is going to be more and more I imagine. Uh, certainly in the short term, maybe in the long term it'll actually come down to nothing since most people have decent solar by then. Uh, uh, but anyway, the um, the it's far better to keep your power um, on site than than to put it onto the grid. So uh, um, that's that's where we are. Um, we concentrate on that automation so we can uh, control the batteries better. The other thing is that um, uh, with the external device, that twelve volt um, uh, charger, uh, sorry, the twelve volt battery monitor, uh, it, it is actually twelve volt. And it's, it's holding us up because we we ideally we're at 12 volts where yeah, we can boost to boost to 90 but the, the current once you start to get too high you start to it starts the the um, booster can't, can't maintain that it will start to collapse um, but at 24 volts it, it should um, cope much better we should be able to go maybe get the 600 watts that we need um, to uh, to cancel out the overnight um, cost Anyway, um, I could ramble on all day, so I'll pause, I'll take a break here, and we'll catch up again soon.